welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a puzzle called The Mods Are Asleep uh, by SSG. I do not know um, what this refers to. The Mods Are Asleep makes it sound like, uh, well, it makes it sound like Tristan and Alex, our live streaming mods, uh, are asleep. And that's definitely something I think they never do. They're always on the ball. Um, this could be something about modulo arithmetic, though. I'm not sure. It's a Rembrandt puzzle with some arrows in it, so we'll have to see. It's got some fantastic feedback, by the way, this one. Apparently, a bit like yesterday's puzzle, this is something of a masterpiece. Now, if you haven't watched yesterday's video, please take a look at it. This puzzle is something very, very special indeed. Potato Head 21 um, seems to have discovered something about um, anti-night Sudoku, something I certainly was unaware of. And this puzzle actually allows you to work towards what Potato Head 21 has discovered. And it really, it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind, blew, blew my mind yesterday. Absolutely extraordinary. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link to the video on the screen, but please try that puzzle. You will, you'll just be lost in admiration for it. Um, now I've got some other news today. Yes, Logic Masters India. Over on Logic Masters India, they are having a beginners contest. I think this is running from the 5th of November to the 10th of November. It's a one hour contest and it's aimed at people who've never done a logic puzzle contest before. Uh, it's run by some fabulous, fabulous setters. So um, people like Punching Kato, who many of you will be familiar with over on our Discord server, a big friend of the channel, DJ Mathman, um, who else? Conflux and Bataku. I think they have put together the test. So do have a look at that. I will put a link to that under this video as well. Uh, and I'm assured all the puzzles will be uh, describable with the adjective gas. So genuinely approachable. Well, probably gap actually, genuinely approachable puzzles. Um, what else? Oberdin. Some of you are asking when we're next going to be streaming that. Probably Friday night. We'll announce it on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Cryptic Cracking if you don't follow us there. Uh, then you should. It's a marvellous place. Um, and the only other thing to mention is of course Patreon where we've ticked over into the start of a new month. That means there is an incredible monthly reward at the moment. This Japanese sum Sudoku hunt by Panthera and the Asylum. Um, yeah, actually I, I loaded up the first... Um, this is the first. so basically I think there are seven different files of puzzles, 45 puzzles in all, and you work your way up through the difficulty. So this is the intro section. And I thought some of you might like this because there's a sort of intro to Japanese sums. And at the back of this, there's also um, uh, a basically a hints page where it describes some of the logic. Here you go. So if you're really unfamiliar with Japanese sums, you can find all sorts of hints and tips there, as well as lots of puzzles. So do check that out. We know you'll enjoy it. There's also actually over a patron, my solve of this puzzle, Zeta Maths, Two Truths and a Lie, an incredible, incredible Sudoku. Sudoku world is in such a purple patch at the moment. I mean, it, every day we're getting, we're getting sent countless puzzles. And the testing reports on, on, you know, the vast majority are incredible puzzle, incredible puzzle, incredible puzzle. So yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful. What a wonderful time to be able to solve Sudokus. Now, what are the rules of the mods are asleep? Uh, I'll read them to you. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So that's, that's something we understand. Uh, digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So let's look at this uh, arrow here. Those three digits there, let's imagine they were two, three, and four. Then you'd have to put nine into the circle because two plus three plus four is equal to, you've guessed it, nine. So that's how arrows work. Now, each purple line must contain a non-repeating set of consecutive digits in any order. So these, sometimes this, uh, this constraint is referred to as Renban. Um, and basically that means, um, let's look at this Renban, I suppose, while, while the cursor is here. Let's imagine we worked out that this square was a nine. Now we would know, because this has to be a consecutive sequence of digits, it must be seven, eight, and nine. We wouldn't know the order. It's not like when you have thermometers where you know that the, you know, the bulb end is always the, the lowest digit. So the, the digits seven, eight, and nine could be in any order any order along the Renban, excuse my voice, it's still failing me, um, but they would have to be a seven and an eight in those two squares. So that's how Renbans work. Do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. 
Now, my normal approach to any Arrow Sudoku is to figure out, yeah, I mean, cells like this. You can see this arrow is three cells long. These digits here all have to be different. So if we minimize them with one, two, and three, this sum would still equal six. So this cell here has got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. Um, same is true of this circle here. So again, we've got a three cell arrow there. So that's got to be six, seven, eight, or nine as well. I've now got a squeaky chair. I haven't noticed that before. Um, now, okay, this, uh, this circle is a little bit interesting as well because look, it sort of, it goes up that way in one direction, but it also goes up here and comes down this way in the other direction. And in this direction, it's adding up three numbers again, all of which have to be different. So that's got to be six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Um, now that, oh, right, I was about to say this one has a, a sort of massive arrow coming out of it, which didn't look correct. And indeed is not correct because the purple line is a Remban line, not an arrow. So this one's arrow, goes upwards and it's a two cell arrow, which is absolutely hopeless. Another two cell arrow there, another two cell arrow there. So I may be wrong, but I don't think we're gonna be able to start this puzzle by reference to the arrows. We're gonna to have to think about the Ren bands. And we've got some quite big Ren bands. We've got like a question mark Ren band there. Boop, no, it, it really is a question mark. And we've got another one there that's, how many is that? Seven. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got two seven cell rem bands. Um, okay. And in fact, the digit that I think is interesting there is that one, look. Why is this interesting? Well, this sees every single cell on the question mark rem band. So whatever is in that, that cell there simply cannot appear on the other Ren band. And that's, hmm, I was about to say that's very interesting. I'd say it's mildly interesting. I'll award this cell the, um, the <laughs> well, the award of being mildly interesting, quite interesting, a QI cell, because if we imagine the digits one to nine in a, in a row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zhoot, like that, and you think about selecting seven consecutive digits from that sequence, you can see there are certain digits that are always going to have to be included. It would be impossible to not have a three on this Renban, because if you don't have a three, if you try and put three here, for example, now you can't have a three on this Renban, so how are you going to select seven consecutive digits from the digits one to nine? It's impossible. If you go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's only six digits. Your seventh digit has become impossible. So you're always going to have three, four, five, six, and seven on both of these rem bands. So that square has got to be a one, two, eight, or nine. Um, yes. <laughs> maybe I was maybe I was overestimating the interestingness of this of this this cell. Uh, not actually seeing how to do how to do anything with that. What about the other thing? Actually, this puzzle is making me think about is Ard van der Vatering's set trick because those digits there. They almost look like they're being described by these rem bands, and there's some there's some equivalence, isn't there, between that that sort of pattern and this sort of pattern. I can't. I'd have to reprove it to remember what it was, but it's something like that. Um, I don't know. We, we'll come back to that if we get stuck. What about what about that? Ah. Right, yes, got something. That digit is a five. Can you work out how I got that digit as a five? It's rather, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing clever. It's just simply experience. So um, how do I know this digit is a five? Well, let's look at that. That's a five cell Remban. Now, I know something about a five cell Remban. In fact, the way I've got this, by the way, is, is doing a little bit of secreting as well. If you don't know the secret of Sudoku, let me tell it to you. The rules of Sudoku state that each row, each column, and each box need to contain the digits one to nine once each. 
So if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So every complete correct row, column or box of a Sudoku adds up to 45, including box 9 in this puzzle. But that's interesting in the context of these REM bands, because a 5-cell REM band, if you add up the digits on it, they are divisible by 5. How do we know this? Well, we can prove this mathematically. Um, so this is a sequence of five digits. Let's take the middle digit of those five. We're going to call that digit X. So we could now describe this Remban as there's going to be a, a digit that's two lower than X. So an X minus two digit. There's going to be an X minus one digit. There's going to be the digit X. Then there's going to be a digit X plus one and then a digit X plus two. Well, if you sum those together, you get 5x exactly. So this is going to have to be five times its middle digit. The same is true, obviously, of this Remban line. That's another five cell Remban line. So this is also divisible by five if we sum the digits along it. So why is this? Why does this matter? How does this allow me to conclude that this is a five? Well, if those five cells are divisible by five, <laughs> and these five cells are divisible by five, then these ten cells together are also divisible by five. But we know that box nine is itself divisible by five, so this cell, when it's added in, must be divisible by five on its own. Well, what, di what digits are there between the digits one and nine that are divisible by five? Only one. So that's how I knew that this was a five. So that square there has got to be six, seven, eight or nine. And if you're worried at all about that conclusion with the X's or that seemed complicated, let's just, let's put in some digits on this Remban. We'll just make them up. We'll, we'll say this is a two, three, four, five Remban line. Two, three, four, five, six Remban line. Okay, so which is the middle digit there? Well, it's obviously the four. The four has two digits lower and two digits higher. So this is this is our X, if you like. And you can see that there's a digit that's one less than X there and a digit that's one higher than X. If you add three plus five together, you get eight, which is two X. So at the moment, those three squares add up to three lots of X or three times four. If we take the X minus two and the X plus two digit, add those two together, we get 8, which again is another 2x. So altogether, this line adds, to, adds up to 5x or 5 times 4. And that's why that trick works. That would work with any consecutive sequence of five numbers. Now, this square now has to be 1, 2, 3, or 4, because obviously this can't be more than that, or this would be a double digit number. 5. Oh, okay, <laughs> five is on this Remban line. That is not interesting at all, because if you think about our digits one to nine again, if you're ever selecting five sequential digits from the digits one to nine, you're always going to have to pick up a five, no matter which which five or which set you choose. Um, that digit is low. Okay. So can we go further than that? Yes, we can actually. There's a simple deduction here, isn't there? So the question we should be asking is what digit is it impossible for there to be on this Remban line? And that's the digit one. You can't put one on this because if you put one on this Remban line, it would have to be a one, two, three, four, five Remban line. And we know it's got a six, seven, eight or a nine on it. So there is no one on this Remban line, which means there's a one on that Remban line, which means that is a one, two, three, four, five quintuple. There we go. Right. So now we're off to the races. We've got. Uh, what have we got? We've got a. Well, we've got to put. Yes. OK, this is quite cute, actually. So this digit now has to find a home in column nine. Where is its home? Well, we know it's not in those three squares and we know it's not the same as those two digits. So its home is in one of these four squares. Is it possible that its home is on this Remban line? Well, no, because it's a high digit. And we know that the only other digits that we can put in this sequence are the digits one, two, three, four, and five. And we can't actually put five in because there's already a five in the column. So if we try and put this digit here, these two digits would have to be selected from one, two, three, and four, 
but that cannot be a consecutive sequence because the five can't join them together. So that cell, in fact, I think, therefore, must go at the top of the grid into this position. And these squares are one, two, three, four combination. Now, OK, we can go a little bit further, therefore, with this, this string, because this is now we now know this string of digits is either one, two, three or two, three, four. So whatever it is, it's, it's got a two and a three on it. So that square is not a two or a three, which means this square is not a seven or an eight, which means that square is not a seven or an eight. And we're bouncing around all over the place, learning things about SSG's puzzle. Now, five on this Renban line, any five cell Renban must have a five on it. So there's now a five in one of those three cells. Uh, yeah, OK, this is a seven cell Renban line, which also must have a five on it. So there's a five in one of those five cells. So there's no five in these two cells. No. Ah, right. Beautiful. Where is the five in box five now? It can't repeat on a Renban line that's already got a five on it. So it's not here. This five tells us it's not there. These pencil mark fives tell us it's not there. So it's in one of two places in box five, which means it's not up there anymore. So we've got dominoed fives now. There's got to be a five in one of those six cells. And OK. And is this where we're going to get stuck? The answer is probably yes. Um, what else can we see in the puzzle? We can see. I don't know if we got the same. Is we got some sort of symmetry going on with those two squares? Have we? Is that the same thing again? So whatever's on this Remban line has to go in five of those six cells. Feel like that's sort of hmm. Um, or can I use the arrow? Oh, good grief. Right. OK, this is nice. This is very nice indeed. Um, right. Let's highlight those cells. So where did these six cells go in column three of the grid? Well, obviously not here because they're in the same box as these these cells here. So these six cells are those six cells. These digits, these digits in orange here are exactly equal to those digits in orange there. Therefore, if we add up these orange digits, whatever that total is will be the same as the sum of those orange digits. But look, we've got an arrow relationship here. So that means that if we were to deduct out of, the to out of this string of oranges, these three cells, we could simply deduct this one from these six cells, and we could still say that these oranges add up to the same number as those oranges. But that's fascinating because that is a five cell Remban, so that's divisible by five. That's a three cell Remban, so that's divisible by three. And again, if you're not sure about your Remban maths, just imagine the contents of this, the central digit here, the middle digit of the three consecutive digits, call it X. Therefore, there is an X minus one and an X plus one to go with the X on this. Add those three things up, you will get three X. So this is divisible by three. This is divisible by five. Three and five are both prime. So how can those three digits and these five digits add up to the same number? Well, only if the number they're adding up to is a multiple of 15, three times five. Now, there are many multiples of 15 that one could think about using, but only one of them will work because that is a three cell sequence that cannot contain a consecutive, well, cannot contain a repeated digit. So this cannot add up to 30 or 45 or 60 or anything like that. 
it's got to add up to 15 and therefore those cells have got to add up to 15 and therefore that is a one two three four five quintuple and that is rather beautiful well it's absolutely beautiful actually so it is true to say so this was sort of my instinct was is that it could we could we somehow prove that those two squares were the same well absolutely we can there may have been a simpler way of doing that but um that's the way i've done it and now look i've got to put one two three four and five in this column and they can't go in those cells and they're not that one so that sequence of digits is one two three four and five now this is a three cell rempan so what digits you know if we put seven eight or nine into this cell we can't put consecutive digits in this one so this must be six and that must be a four five pair that's gorgeous <laughs> I love this puzzle so far. Now we've got a one, two, three, triple here. It's, oh, I see, and that makes sense because we know those two digits are the same. So six equals one plus two plus three. Six equals one plus two plus three up here as well. So these squares are seven, eight, and nine. These squares are seven, eight, and nine. And suddenly, we're, yeah, we are cooking with gas. Look, six is seeing that one. So green gets filled in. That's got to be a nine. That's not a nine anymore. Nine is in this domino. So nine, uh, nine, can nine go on this Renban? Um, I was about to say yes, but I'm not sure that's correct, is it? If you put nine on this Renban, then this Renban is made up of the digits three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Well, those two digits are well, one of those digits is too low because one of those digits cannot be three and therefore is a one or a two. So you can't put nine on this Remban. I don't think. I think that has to be nine. So this is not nine. Um, so, oh, hang on a minute. I've just noticed I've got a quintuple as well in column one, which I didn't see. So... You can see these five digits have to be one, two, three, four, and five. So those digits have to be six, seven, and eight. There's definitely a four and a five in this quintuple at the bottom. So those two are not four and five. Oh, <laughs> and this domino is on an arrow. So that can't be a nine. And in fact, that can't be a three. If that's a three plus seven, it's going to add up to a double digit number. So we are... Oh, I'm seeing lots of things all of a sudden. Nine can't go there. So that's got to be the nine in box, uh, in box seven. So nine, nine is in one of three places in row nine. It's probably here. Um, if it's there, this Remban would be known. Can't immediately see why. Well, actually, hang on no that can't be nine can it because then this cell wouldn't have a value if you put nine this cell here whatever it is six seven or eight it sees the entirety of that Remban line so if this was a nine this Remban line would see would will would be five six seven eight and nine and this would have no fill so that can't be nine six must be on this well in one of those two positions on this Remban line again. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, okay. Okay, look, we can do much better on this Remban line, sorry. I've been focused, I was focused on the extreme digits, but what are the simple digits that must go on a seven cell Remban line? All of the middly digits have to go on the Remban line. So digits like four, five have to be on the Remban line. Well, none of those are four and five. So that must be a four, five pair. Uh, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven, yes, seven must be on. Yes, seven must be on the Remban line. So seven must be here in the same cells that we've pencil marked six. So that's a six, seven pair. That's a now an eight. And that means that squares an eight by Sudoku. That's not an eight. Wow, this is down to six or seven. And there's a five on the arrow. 
So this is, well, these cells are selectable from 1, 2, and 5. Um, I don't know. Can we do better than that? If we... Um, I don't know. We might be able to do better than that, but I can't immediately see how to do it. If that's a, oh yeah no hang on if that's a five you can't put you can't make this arrow work yeah look if that's a five how would we make this arrow add to the right number we'd have to go double one on the line that's clearly not going to work from a little old Sudoku perspective so that's a five that's a five that's a four that's no longer a four that's no longer a five so this is one or two. And if this is a six, that would be, these would be one, two, and three. And if this is a seven, these have to be one, two, and four. Oh, okay, a simpler way of thinking about that is that this domino here adds up to the same as that digit because of the nature of this arrow. If this arrow, whatever it is, it's summing this cell in both directions. So this cell is common to this arrow's t total and that arrow's total, which means this as a five has to be the same total as that. So we've got to add four to this. It's either one, four or two, three. Uh, bobbins, I don't know which. Okay, so we're gonna have to think again, I think. Oh, this is a nine, so that's a four. Hang on, when did I get this nine? Oh, did I get it from that six? Yes, I did. When that became a six, that became a nine. And I already knew that was a five, so I could have filled that in as a four. So this Remban line here is a one, two, three Remban line, which doesn't look very helpful. Four, ah, four is forced into one of those two squares. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So box five, this has to be, we know these two squares add up to five, so that must be a one, four pair, I think. So that's not a one. That must be a two now. So this must be a seven now. And suddenly, well, we still haven't really stopped cooking with gas. I know we're got, not flying along here, but we're doing okay. Now that's not a two. And those squares are twos, threes, and sixes. There's definitely a six on here, on this Remban line. Ah, okay, so there's definitely a four on this Remban line because we know that this pair of digits here is a six and a two or a three. So whether it's two or three, this Remban line to be consecutive sequence needs a four on it and the four can only go vertically, which is chocolate teapot worthy. Sorry, that doesn't seem to do anything, I don't think. It doesn't resolve this combination. Um, oh dear, right, what do we do next then? Do we know about the nature of this Remban? This is, the, this is a big Remban we've done nothing with. I know that this digit does not make an appearance on this Remban, but I haven't actually managed to limit this square at all. Oh, I'll tell you what I can do though. I can limit it a bit. I can remove nine because of this domino. I know that the, the maximum I can make this domino is a two and a three. So is, there's either a one, put it a different way, there's either a one on this Remban, in which case I could remove eight and nine from here, or there's a two. There must be a one or a two or both in this domino. So that can never be a nine because a nine Remban is a, nine, a seven cell nine Remban is just gonna be nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. So if that's an eight, that would be a two, three pair. Oh, that wouldn't work either. There you go. If that's an eight, that has to be a two, three pair, doesn't it? Because it can't have a one on it and that's gonna break that cell. So there we go, we're now down to one, we now got a one, two, three triple on this Remban. And we know that, yeah, yeah, this is quite funny. So this is a really strange one, two, three triple on the Remban because the Remban can't contain a, cons uh, 
a repeated digit. And a 3 must be there in one of those two squares. So that square has become a 2, which means we can get rid of 2 from here. This is now a 3, 6 pair. Do we know? We don't know what we don't know about this Remban, though, do we? We know we now know there's a four and a five on it, but we knew that already. We know there's a two in one of those three cells. How peculiar. OK, so we're still stuck. Um, so how do we get a grip on this Renban? It's not odd, is it? Oh no! Oh no no! Oh, I've made a mis I've made a mistake. Oh, I'm so sorry. Ah! ah. <laughs> oh no 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 no! Well, when I say I've made a mistake, I've I've just realised something. Hang on a minute. Let me just stare at this for a second. Oh no! Oh no, <laughs> this is very clever by SSG. Um, I can't quite, I haven't quite worked out what it means, but it's certainly something we need to talk about and I didn't spot it and I could have spotted it ages ago. Oh, I'm half hour into the video. Oh no, <laughs> right. We need to talk about Ard van der Vatering's trick, don't we? Because, because of this little arrow here, I didn't notice it. Oh dear. Right. I'm going to get rid of some colouring in the grid. Let's let's actually uh, control A. I think allows me to get rid of everything. So, what on earth am I wittering on about? I can hear you say. Well, let me show you. Let me show you. We're going to have to prove the odd trick. So I'm going to highlight some cells in this puzzle. There we go. Highlighted some cells. Why have I highlighted these cells? Well, what I want to do is describe these cells. A bit like in yesterday's puzzle when we proved Fistemafel's theorem. This is a variation of that. It's another set thing, a set equivalence theory. Um, I have no idea the disposition of digits within the blue squares, but in total, I can describe the blue squares perfectly. And that's because this is five complete rows of the Sudoku. Each row of a Sudoku, because of the rules of Sudoku, has the digits 1 to 9 in it once each. So this blue region I've just highlighted can be described absolutely precisely as five sets of the digits 1 to 9 in some order. I don't know what the order is. I don't care. Now, if I removed from blue those cells, that's clearly a complete set of the digits 1 to 9 because that's the whole of box 1 which by the rules of Sudoku contain the digits one to nine once each. So if I remove that, what I'm left with is four complete sets of the digits one to nine. And you can see that fairly simply, actually, if we just add box one, that's one, box two, row four and row five. So this is four sets of the digits one to nine. I'm now gonna highlight four different sets of the digits one to nine. Now, when I've done that, what I want everyone to appreciate is that the two sets of digits in those two colors will be the same because this is definitely four sets of the digits one to nine. And if I highlight the final four columns of the grid in orange, that's clearly a different four sets of the digits one to nine, but it's still four sets of the digits one to nine. So if I was to put all of the digits in blue in a sack here, and then I was to put all the digits in orange in a sack here, the digits in both sacks would be identical. Now, given I've got two identical sacks of digits, I want to look at this cell here. Let's imagine in the finished grid, this cell was a seven. Now, if I reached into my sack of blue digits and I pulled out a seven, and I reached into my bag of orange digits and I pulled out a seven and I threw them away, it would still be absolutely true to say that my sack of blue digits, what's left in my sack of blue digits and what's left in my sack of orange digits would be the same because they were the same before I took the seven out and I've taken the seven out of both. So they're still the same. So I can remove this one and that's exactly what I'm going to do. 
And in fact, for every single cell that has two colours in it, I am going to take out that digit from both sets, from both sacks. So I've just done that. And now we have the, the classic ARD band of Atering trick, which tells us that the blue cells are the same set of digits. So in my blue sack, what I've got left is these digits, and it's the same digits in my orange sack. The 16 cells there, you can see, if you add up that, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, there's 16 digits in blue. So again, a bit like actually with what I did down here, if I was to add up all my blue digits and I was to add up all my orange digits, because they're the same digits, they add up to the same number. Now look, this is what I've missed. Look here. If I remove seven or cells or digits totaling seven from my blue sack and I remove an actual seven from my orange sack, then it's no longer true to say that the blue sack and the orange sack contain the identical digits anymore because there are less digits left in the blue sack than there are in the orange sack now. But it's still absolutely true to say that the total of the blues and the total of the oranges is the same. And why am I excited about this? Well, look, I think this was the whole point of the puzzle. I could have done this at the start of the puzzle and I missed it. But this blue set of digits encompasses perfectly two seven cell REM bands. This remaining set of digits in orange encompasses exactly three five cell REM bands. Why is this interesting? Well, let's think about the nature of a seven cell REM band. It's exactly the same as we, I think we had it with a three cell and a five cell REM band. A seven cell REM band, if you add up the digits on it, it's divisible by seven. And we can see that again. Imagine you have a string of seven consecutive numbers. Take the middle number, call it X. Then the digits on either side of x are x minus 1 and x plus 1. So adding those together, you get 2x. Then take the next two lowest, they're x minus 2 and x plus 2. Add them together, you get 2x. And the final digits on the extremes are x minus 3 and x plus 3. Add them together, you get 2x. So the sum of digits on a 7-cell red band is 7x. Therefore, it's divisible by seven. So if the blue squares are divisible by seven and the orange squares are divisible by five, seven and five are both prime. So how can, what, what sort of totals are we gonna be looking for that this could possibly be true? Well, we've got to be multiplying five by seven to get 35. The blue squares have to add up to a multiple of 35 and the orange squares have to add up to a multiple of 35 so they're adding up to the same number, but it's a multiple of 35 now, and that's hard. That is hard because, well, it's not 35. We can see that immediately from the secret because those cells already add up to 45. So we're looking at 70, I think. So I think it's true to say that the orange squares add up to 70 and the blue squares add up to 70. But that, I'm just gonna check uh, three lots of 35, 105. I don't think that's possible. That would require those six cells to add up to 60. That is impossible because the maximum I could make three cells in a row add up to would be seven, eight, and nine, which is 24. And you can see they can't even be that. 24 plus 24 is 48. It is not 60. So, so, so we've now proved, and I could have done this probably at the start, I think. I've proved the blue squares sum to 70. The blue squares sum to 70. And the orange squares sum to 70. So if the orange squares sum to 70, and that's 45, these squares sum up to 25, that's a five. So these squares sum up to 20. Be this is beautiful logic. It's absolutely beautiful because now if these five squares sum up to 20, what's, what's X? Well, the middle digit is gonna have to be four because we know this is a multiple of uh, a five. It's gonna have to be four times five equals 20. So the central digit on this REM band is a four and the REM band is two, three, four, 
5 and 6. So we now know these squares, they are a perfect uh, 2, 4, 5 triple. And that doesn't do anything. Ah, come on. Oh, it does do something. Yes, it does do something. Look at the bottom row now. I've got a quintuple there on 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So those squares are 6s, 7s, 8s and 9s. And that, oh, that one's got to be bigger than that one, hasn't it? So that's got to be an 8 or a 9. Uh, okay. No, all right, so that that's not done anything yet, I don't think. I'm surprised. Um, <laughs> sorry, I thought I thought this was going to be the key to everything. Well, let's come back to this one then. So we know that these blue squares sum to 70 as well. So if if that's Oh, hang on. Yeah, hang on. We know the sum of this one. This is this is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 septuple or heptuple probably septuple, in which case the middle digit there is a 4. So this is adding up to 28, yeah, the triangular number for 7. So if that's adding up to 28, this, in order to make sure the blues add up to 70, is adding up to 42. And if it's adding up to 42 and it's 7 digits long that are consecutive, it's missing the 1 and the 2. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. So this is a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 Renban. Okay. And we're going to get proper good lift now. We're going to look at that. So that is what that looks like. Those are not six, eight, and nine, and that one is not five either. Um, okay, <laughs> those are not seven or five. That one is not. Oh, both of these are not four actually. Okay, so that's still. Still not that good. Oh, I've got a one, two, three triple in row three, so that's not a three. Whoopsie, that one's not a three. This one's not a, oh, those two are not five because of this five here. Can't quite see if we're getting a meaningful restriction. I love that though. I absolutely love the fact that you can use set to tell you that this is these digits add up to 70. And then because you know that this Remban is a 28 Remban, you then can work out the way the other Remban must work. That is stunning setting. Oh, goodness me. At the moment, this is it's just... The world of Sudoku is on fire. That's got to be at least a three. Oh, that's got to be high-ish as well. Ah, no, no, that's it. Right, right. This arrow is now helpful. I've not looked at this arrow before, but I'm, let me just think about this. I'm not sure. No, actually this arrow is beautiful. This arrow I think has only just become useful because I needed to get, yeah, this cell is very restricted. It can't be one, two or three from the row and it can't be four or five from the column. So it's at least six. And this square here can't be one or two. So that's got to be a minimum of three. And that's the maximum we can ever put into these squares because we need to keep this down to a single digit number. Three, six, and nine go into the grid. And we know there's a six and a nine on the Remban, so they're not in those squares. That's a six, nine pair. I can get rid of all sorts. Of, I think I'm just gonna delete all this. I think we can just remember what this is. Yeah, in fact, that's that's helpful to immediately think about, isn't it? We know that there's no one or two on this Remban, so there must be a one or a two there. And it's not a two because of the column. So this is a one, that's a two because it's on a Remban. That's a two because it must be on this Remban. And the two here rules it out of those squares. So we've got, we've not put an eight into this box, so that must be an eight. That's a two now because it's not a one. This is a one, three pair. Um, which means what? Nothing. Oh, there's a three here. Yes, it does. Three, one. Um, <laughs> come on. Oh, I've got a six, nine pair here, which is looking at that. So that's become an eight. Therefore, that must be seven and this must be one. 
and we can get rid of ones from all of those squares and one from oh in fact this one is a naked single now it sees one and two two here tells us that order so that's a two that's a one that fixes the one and the three good grief okay so now all of a sudden it feels like we're making better progress we can remove seven and eight from these squares and that's got to be a naked single six now Move six and nine from these we've got a seven eight pair in row seven. Oh no we haven't that's an eight because it's got a seven underneath it so that's an eight that's a seven that six means that's a nine We've got to put six into box eight, it can only go there. So these squares here are one, three, and four, which gives us a one, three, four, triple there. And so now we know the top two cells here are a five, seven pair, which we don't seem to know. Okay, but those squares therefore have got to be the other digits that haven't appeared on this Remban line yet. So these are three, four, and eight. So that's a four at the top of the grid. That's a three, that's an eight. Okay, I think there's a lot of Sudoku I could have done to help me help me here, but we've been doing it the most complicated way we can, which is absolutely the way we should have done it. So now four in one of these, you can't put four on a Remban with an eight if it's only three cells long. So that square goes in, that's got to be a seven. This has got to be a six or a nine and don't know what I don't know if we know what that is but that is a six nine pair there so that's seven that's six that's six that's nine that's become nine so this was a seven eight nine remban six here means this is a five oh no or a, oh I made a mistake bother what have I done wrong there what did I do wrong there sorry this the reason I've got a problem is this is a six so this needs to be five or seven so maybe when I did maybe when I did this row I made an error did I it's not immediately clear to me what error that was six nine three four five six seven eight nine on the Remban all looks like it's quite sensible seven into one of these squares looks quite sensible feels almost like it's this five that's being that's playing up see that's got to be a five. Oh dear oh dear and now this has got no value so maybe it's the six that's wrong but that six seemed to be have to be correct five or seven maybe this seven is wrong if these were the other way round no, that can't be right because this is a nine. That's forcing the nine down here. Or five, six, eight here. Something has gone awry, hasn't it? Okay, so we're gonna to have to think harder. Now, what could it be that's gone wrong here? What are those digits then? They are four and seven. This one looks like it's working. 7 here would force this to be 9. Hmm, I don't know. The other option would be that this 5 is incorrect. That looks like that was proved quite early on, wasn't it? And that looks like that's working as well. 2, 4, 5 here. 4, 7, oh no. problem is I don't think this is a trivial mistake oh I know what it is yes I do I spotted it I put one three and four in there I should have put one three and seven that's where we went wrong okay that was a while ago wasn't it let's let's back up oh no not too far away phew okay so one three and seven so that's a seven okay so that would have been easier so we've, we've just made the puzzle immensely harder for ourselves, but I think at this point we might not be incorrect. <laughs> it's probably famous last words, isn't it? I'm just staring at this with, <laughs> with <laughs> renewed concern. Okay, so we've got a 3-4-5 triple here. 
Let's check this digit out then. So this digit has to be five or seven at this point. And at this point, it's got both options available to it. Okay. Um, so where can we get some easy wins? That square is a naked single. That's a seven, that's a nine. That seven is fixing this as a five, which it does seem to be able to be at the moment. Now the other digit we were worried about was what goes on here, weren't we? So if we got an easy way of proving the options for that square at the moment. We probably do. There's a, in fact, six has got to go exactly there in box three. So that becomes a six, three pair. There's no three down here. There's no two or five here. So this is a two, five pair, which is resolved. Okay, I'm taking this very slowly now. Four sevens and eights into those squares. Um, yeah, you can't repeat eight on the same rem band. So that becomes eight. This becomes four and seven. You still can't put four on the rem band with the eight. So that's got to be seven. That's got to be four. This has got to be six or nine. It can't be six. So that could be nine. Now, is this working? Nine, six, six, seven. That square there has got to be an eight. That looks okay. Now this has got to be a one, seven pair, which I don't want to speak too soon, but that does look more reasonable, doesn't it? Five and four, five up here. This square here is a seven. Okay, and then what do we what do we need to put on the rem band still? Well, let's get that digit. That's a four, four, one, one, three. We need a three on the rem band. We need an eight on the rem band. It's now working. Few. Okay, a bit of a a bit of a shank there, but I think we've saved it. And I'm relieved about that because this puzzle is certainly, it's such a beautiful puzzle. It would have been an absolute travesty if I'd ruined it and it couldn't have gone on the channel. So that's got to be a two, that's got to be a four. And that I think is how to solve the puzzle. The mods are asleep. They may be sleeping. My brain may have let me down towards the end there, but that was a beautiful puzzle. I'd love to have another go at that actually almost trying to do in fact let's just let's just duplicate this for a second knowing what we know now what can we learn about the puzzle if we started again so if i just started the puzzle and i knew exactly how to do it what would we have got immediately we would have known ab initio you would know ab initio because remember it doesn't matter what goes on this arrow this was a seven and this was a two five in the correct grid, but this is irrelevant because we're just removing these two digits, which we know sum to that digit. So in terms of our blueness and orangeness, we've always got this relationship, haven't we? So this is always true at the start of the puzzle. So at the start of the puzzle, we would have known that these sum to 70 and these sum to 70. Now, what could we have done with that knowledge? Well, I suppose it depends a bit whether I, I could have got this five very quickly and then I would have known that this was a two, three, four, five, six rem ban. So I could have got this straight away. I'd have known that these seven cell rem bands were summing to, summing to 70, but I know they're different because I know that this cell cannot go on this ren ban so what we can't have if they're different is two rem two seven cell ren bands that each are adding up to 35 so you can't have you can't have two ren bands that are each bounded by two and eight so you can't have two three four five six seven eight twice that will not work so that's telling us immediately at the start of the puzzle that there is a high rem ban and a low rem ban. So at the start of the puzzle, we could have known that there was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rem ban and a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rem ban, but we wouldn't have known the order of them, I don't think, at this point. So maybe I didn't ruin it quite as much as I feared. I feared that this was sort of what I was meant to do at the start. Uh, which I clearly didn't do <laughs> and for that I apologize but I think we still would have had to we'd have learned some very interesting things 
but I think it's true to say we, we I wouldn't have sort of made it a half hour solve. I think I'd still have had to do some some more difficult logic in order to fix the ordering of these rem bands and go from there. What a fascinating puzzle that is brilliant. I love that SSG. I really did. I I I'm a big fan. I probably shouldn't say this, but I am a big fan of modular arithmetic in Sudoku. I think it's 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 got so many elegant applications, and this was a great example. So thanks very much for creating such a beautiful, beautiful Sudoku. I hope you enjoyed me struggling through it, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.